Hey folks, so today I'm in the process of getting an enclosure ready for a battery build and I thought to myself, hang on, it'll be a good time for me to do a quick video about the processes that I go through to preparing these enclosures so they can be securely mounted to your electric mounting board. And the different bits of hardware that I use, the way I go about measuring the distances um, the T-nuts and how I fuse the T-nuts into the pally case enclosure so that way they're nice and neat. So I hope you find this information useful. Um, you might want to use it on your future build. As well. um, so I genuinely hope it does help. So let's get to it. Right, so starting on the enclosure first. Um, pally case 1200 perfect size, can fit up to 12 and 6p molly cells in there. It gives about a cruising range of 50 kilometers. Um, if you're pushing it hard, you'll maybe get 40 to 45 kilometers out of a full pack charge. These enclosures are kick arts. Um, watertight, bomb proof, probably nuclear bomb proof. Um, I usually get them full padded up. Let's take the pads out. The reason why I love these enclosures is if you're building using one of these guys, you'll notice that they're not perfectly square. So finding a center point where to drill a hole can be challenging. And whenever I'm mounting these guys to a mountain board, I never drill the board first. I always drill the enclosure first, and then I find the center point of the board and align the center point of the hole from the enclosure to the board. So enclosure first, find the center point to the board second, and then um, screw it all in that way. Um, now the really cool thing about these guys is that Pallycase do a good job at creating a kick-ass mold. And when these things come out of their um, uh, injection casing, whatever you want to call it, what happens is the center point is already marked in this enclosure. So it takes a lot of the guesswork out and having to measure a non-square-ish enclosure and find where that center point is. So if you hold it up to the light, you'll see that there's a circle right in the middle. So all you need to do is just mark out where that dot is and give it a drill. So that's what we're gonna do now. So here we are zoomed in and let's give you a glimpse of what that center point will look like and if we use the light to our favor we'll see that there is a perfect circle right there and that is the center point so I'm going to mark a dot right there and drill through it and that's going to be our point of reference. Okay. Get a bit shaky sometimes, right? And that is the center point. And we zoom that right in again to the light. Perfect. Nice, easy, simple. So now we've got the center point marked out. What we want to do is measure out where the other two holes are going to go so we can use our um, T-nut and uh, screws uh, to securely mount them onto the deck. So what I do is I leave a 55 millimeter distance between that center point on either side. So using Calipers, verniers, I measure out 55 and I lock that in place, right? Why is it always? 
always so tricky to get it bang on. And you know, when you've got OCD, uh, 54.99, I'm going to lose points, doesn't matter. I tend to work always on a mat or on the cloth as well, prevents damage to the board. Now what I do is, um, I scribe using these points to get the reference. So now that the center hole is being punched in, I can put a, uh, a an end on there and I can just scribe that across. And I can do it on the other side as well. So what you will end up with is something like this. So you can see two little half circles. Now I do know that there are they are 55 millimeters on the other side. And now what we want to do is find that center point to draw a line across. Okay, so now we've got the distance scribed into the enclosure on either side. All we need to do is figure out how we're going to get a nice perfect right angle line going down on either side. And for that we need another tool. Let's go right here. Um, and what this allows me to do is I can butt that side right up against that line there. So I'm going to get a perfect right angle every single time. And I want to line it up to the edge of that half circle that was created using the calipers, right? And using a corner of a ruler, I'm just going to etch that right down. One side. zoom in and see what that looks like now. So you can see the two half circles and then we have a perfect line going up and down and that's important that we get that line square. And it's important that we get it square is because now we're going to measure the distance and then mark the halfway point and guess what? That's going to be our next drill bit, drill bolt. Right, so let's do it. So that's one, two, seven, dot twelve. Let's go. One, two, seven, dot twelve, divided by two, sixty three, five, six. Perfect. Check it out. 
check this out now. You're gonna love it. So what we have is using those two right angle lines, those half circle points, and measuring the distance from either of those two lines there, we're able to get a perfect uh, center line going across. And that's where our next two holes will be. And that'll ensure that when we drill those holes out and mount them into the enclosure that they're perfectly aligned, right? They're square, they're straight, uh, and they're Mickey Mouse. Let's own it. That's it. So there are our three key holes that we're going to use now to drill out and put in some T-nuts. So let's do that. Okay, holes are marked. I've put it big, big enough on my drill so that way my T-nut, the end of that nut, can sit snugly in there. Now, of course, that's not how I'm going to install it, right? That T-nut actually goes on the inside of the enclosure. And it will sit like that. These enclosures, they're made so well that no matter how much force I apply to this T-nut, those teeth on the end will never bite into that plastic. That plastic is just so tough that it's virtually impossible to get that to seat perfectly flush in that enclosure. But fortunately, plastic has a kryptonite, and that kryptonite is heat. So I've tested out different methods where I'm using a heat gun, I would have this T-nut sitting on a bolt like that in a vise and heat the entire area with a heat gun until it gets really super hot and then seat it into the plastic and have it melt down. That process works quite good but I found it too fiddly because you've got to move a really super hot object using pliers over to an enclosure and you've only got two arms, right? Um, you tend to drop things and you might mess things up. So there actually is an easier way and I'm gonna jig this enclosure up and show you what that way looks like right now. All right, so what we've got here is just a nice easy way where I can clamp down this enclosure and continue to work on it without having to move and flop around while I'm handling hot objects, right? Uh, one thing I should point out is these T-nuts are stainless steel as well. Um, so, no rust, they, 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 they hold tight. So, now I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna show you how I seat that into position neatly and have it uh, fused into that enclosure so they become one. So, apart from using a heat gun, the next best way to get direct heat onto a metal object is using a big fat soldering iron. What we do is, we leave that soldering iron over on the tina. Now it takes a little bit um, for it to heat up and I usually just focus on the um, on the barbs on the end of the T-nut as well. And that's what it looks like right there. So those barbs are quite long and the idea is that we want to melt this T-nut to the point where those, embar those barbs are entirely uh, pressed in to the pally case plastic. Now it's looking good. And that is seated nicely. And we just hold down with the pliers. That is perfect. Okay. 
Now, hopefully you can see it, but that T-nut now is sitting almost, well, it's not sitting flush, but the lip is sitting on the edge of that plastic, and all those barbs are entirely um, inside now. So what we now do is we can put the other two and we'll get to um, securing them in place as well. So that's the difference between one that's been um, fused in, melted in, to one that hasn't, right? That's not, I don't touch that, it's still hot, but there you go. Okay, so now that is done. And those three T-nuts are fused together with the pally case there as one. Um, so that's pretty cool. So let's take a look at the rest of the components that go into uh, securing this enclosure down. They're in there. They're solid. They're not going in there. Um, and that's what they look like. They tend to poke out just a little bit from the base of the enclosure as well. But that's okay. Because what happens is, um, prior to securing this to your um, mountain board, what we want to do is put some of this PVA foam. This is really cool stuff. It's really dense um, and has really good waterproof properties to it as well. So what happens is, uh, when once there's a peel layer on the back as well, so that gets stuck right there. And I use 20 millimeter high tensile screws. Now, they're not long enough. They can just maybe grab the first um, row of thread on these T-nuts, right? So what I tend to do is, when I build these for folks, I tend to ship a really long M6 bolt with it. And the reason why I do that is to allow the user to torque down the enclosure to the center hole of their deck and then be able to screw these in. So you torque, you torque this down and it compresses the foam right in and then it gives you the ability to screw these in. And they screw in to the point on a bro or on a tramper where the top of that two millimeter sits flush with the uh, flush or just below the, the T-nut in there. Okay, so what that does is that creates a really nice watertight seal preventing any dust, water and debris, mud, whatever from getting, uh, working its way up into that enclosure. And also because those T-nuts are fused in, they help in that um, prevention as well. Now the other thing is that we use the thick piece for the other side, but for the inside we use this thinner piece. This is uh, six millimeters. And what that does is it also has a peel layer to the back as well. So once the enclosure is installed to the deck and it's secured with all the hardware, with this, the last piece is peeling the sticky tape off the back and that gives it a really good insulation properties. So when you put the cells in there, It gives them a really good base so they're not being knocked around too much and it has some really good anti-vibration properties in there as well. Um, and of course there's your little bits and pieces that you would have whether you're using an XT60, XT90 loop key um, and you know your, um, your grommets for your uh, wiring which come out. So I'll do some zoom in on that later on down the track. But um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell on how to get a, um, a Pallycase 1200 enclosure. Jeez, I measured that up really well, I can't get it out. Um, sized up and fitted uh, for a battery to be installed on a mountain wall. So what I do want to quickly mention is that when you've got your deck and you are measuring up how to mount this to your deck. What you want to do is 
Um, you don't want to measure three holes on your mountain board. What you want to do is measure end to end and find the center point. That's all you need. That point in the middle of the deck that is going from that way to that way. Once you have your center point, you'd mark it with the dot and because that's, you can see through that, what you, what you do is you visually go through that way and mount where that center point is and then you can mark out the other two points and then you have three drill holes. So it makes your life easier in that all you need to do is find that center point of your deck. Once you find the center point, um, I tend to leave uh, prior to drilling anything, I find that center point, I put the enclosure on the deck and I tend to stand back and look at the entire build and check all the lines just to make sure that it's not crooked, right? And usually if you put it up against the brick wall um, and you use your horizontal and you use some horizontal lines, that tends to help quite a lot because if something is out of place, you can quickly and easily pick it up. So, so that's just um, some tips, right? So don't worry about drilling three holes in your deck. All you need to do is find the center point. Find that center point, align that center point with the center point on your pallet case enclosure, which is 100% center. And then you'll be able to mark out the other two uh, drill points by just, with a pen, just dropping dots through there. And that will give you a perfectly mounted enclosure that's straight, aligned, it's not crooked, and best of all, you're not using straps to hold this thing in place, right? It is, it is on there, um, and it is on there well. And don't forget to lock tight your, um, your bolts in as well. Uh, that will doubly make sure that nothing comes loose. So I hope you folks found that useful, um, and you can take that info away, steal it, and repurpose it. Maybe you've got your own ways of doing it, and if you do, I'm happy to um, please share that. Uh, I'm, I'm keen on understanding how other folks go about doing this as well. So, there you go. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Um, we'll catch up soon. Cheers.